Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Inscription, shall we? I've been recommended this game by a few people, and I checked it out. The solo dev was kind enough to provide the channel with a key to the game. Thank you very much, and I look forward to trying it, but... I have noticed from people that I don't want to spoil myself on anything. This is my first time. I didn't read anything about the game. I don't know anything f except from what I saw from some screenshots and the brief uh, snippets on Steam's description. So I tried to keep myself as absolutely in the dark as possible so I can enjoy the game without any spoilers. So here we go. And I'll click on this play button, I guess. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, new game, continue, options, credits, quit, new game. Um... Let's see, I want to put that here, maybe. Continue. No, I can't do that. When I click on this, it doesn't like it. So I'm holding it. No, it doesn't like that. Well, what about... Um, continue options. Credits. Quit. Well, continue, I guess. Um, now it's floating, and I'll put it here. But I've never played before. So let's see what this is all about. Okay, um, we're loading our file, I suppose. Oh. Another challenger. It has been ages. Perhaps you have forgotten how this game is played. I have. Allow me to remind you. Thank you so much. Play the squirrel card. Okay. Um, I will play the squirrel card. Uh, right there, I guess. Now play your stoat. Okay. So it's got... Is this zero attack and one health? Um, I'll push S because it's telling me to. To go back to my hand. And I'll click on my stoat. And... Oh, am I gonna... Stoats cost one blood. Sacrifices must be made. I'm going to kill the squirrel for the stoat. An honorable death. Play the stoat. Honorable, huh? All right. And we go back. Wolves require two sacrifices. You don't have enough. Ring the bell to end your turn and commence combat. Okay. So there's this kind of like wood grain table. Uh, there are these evil eyes and there's this alarming looking and very ornately inscribed bell here am i on a train i don't know i heard some sounds no it sounded not like a train it sounded like i was on a ship like a boat or something kind of let's ding it your stoat stands unopposed it is unopposed the number on the bottom left is its attack power one Okay. And it punched over to the other side. Your stoat dealt me one damage. I added it to the scale. Okay, there's the scale. You win if you tip my side all the way down. Okay, hopefully. Like this. He pushed it. You see his hand? That was creepy. Now it's his turn. Oh, he played a coyote. Your stoat stands in the way of my coyote. My coyote dealt two damage to your stoat. This means your stoat is... Your stoat's health is too less. I see that. If a creature's health reaches zero, it dies. Okay? It's my turn again. You may draw from your deck, or you may draw a squirrel. Um, interesting. So I could draw from our deck, or I could draw a squirrel. Well, if I get two squirrels, I can play a wolf. But the... 
by sacrificing my stoat. So let's go ahead and take a squirrel. How dull. I know. I know. But it guarantees me a wolf. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this right here. Now, it's interesting, you know, uh, if I were playing Magic the Gathering, this would have recovered its health. It did not, I guess, kind of like Hearthstone. And it, my stoat did not get to retaliate against a coyote. The coyote just dropped down and did its attack damage to my stoat. Um, so that's another thing I'm going to keep track of. And then, all right, uh, I'm going to play my wolf. And we need to do two sacrifices. So the stoat's already hurt. Now, if I play the wolf... Um, do I get to choose where it goes? Fear not, the beast is sacrificed, but not removed from your deck, okay? Its suffering was real, but you will see it again. Gosh, I didn't need to hear that. Alright, and then I get to choose where I play it. So I'm going to play it on the coyote and just try to kill the coyote so I don't take any damage. I know I won't deal damage to him unless there's trample or something, alright? So... Um, I'm gonna, I need to ring the bell, because I can't play my wolf. I don't think I can draw again. You may only draw a card at the beginning of your turn. Okay, let's play. Bopped it. Because you are learning, I will pass. Well, thank you so much. There was no retail damage done to my wolf, by the way. Alright. Again, the choice. A random card from your deck, or the certainty of a squirrel. Now we're going to take a random card, because we've already got the wolf in play. And we got the river snapper. And the river snapper... Would take two sacrifices, but we don't have enough. So we'll just go ahead and end our turn. And bap him in the face for three. Three damage dealt, three weights on the scale. Pass. That's fortunate. Okay. So we could only take squirrels, because it looks like we have nothing left. So there's like a little squirrel token here. I'll take it. And we got a squirrel. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put down a squirrel here, okay? Um, and I'm going to go back to my hand. And the River Snapper is a big defensive card. It's got six toughness. Um, but I'm not going to play it right now because I've got my wolf out here doing work. So I'm just going to go ahead and attack. And we did three more damage. We won the match. Great. They won't all be so easy. Well, figured. Let me recall your story. Oh, yes. You were lost deep in the forest. A single path revealed itself. So now it's looking like um, it's a, you know, a, a card-based roguelike with a pathing formation, kind of like, you know, Slay the Spire, Darkest Dungeon 2, something like that. Um, but right now I have no choices because I'm learning the game. So we'll go this way. It says single path. And I've got a little game board piece. Two denizens of the forest approached you tentatively. I'm also getting some vibes of like Hand of Fate uh, a little bit. But the gameplay itself, like the way that the card game comes out, uh, is different. Okay. The Caustic Adder. Damage from its poison bite is always lethal. Okay. Or... The Undying Cat, sacrificing the poor beast, does not kill it. Interesting. Only one may grace your paltry deck, so I can choose which to add to our deck. So the Adder does poison damage, um, and that means that whatever creature is played against it, if it hits it, that creature will die. But the Cat is like, I'm good for ramping because I keep coming back. So I kind of like the idea, given what I have right now, of more sacrifices. So I'm going to take that cat. And if I right-click on it, I get a further description. When a card bearing this sigil is sacrificed, it does not perish. And then this says, uh, Touch of Death. When the card bearing this sigil damages another creature, it perishes, right? Um, so that's just like Death Touch in Magic. Okay, I'm going to take the cat. Another creature joins your caravan. We've got a caravan. That's great. Some of the creatures of the forest seem willing to follow you. Okay. You come across an abandoned sack. You found a squirrel in a bottle. Break in case of emergency. 
all right? Uh, break it. And have a second. Oh, this is like a consumable. Another useful implement. I'll allow you to tip the scales with it. <laughs> Pliers, that's funny. Um, three is as much as you can carry. All right, so I have three items. Okay, we're going to go fight a boss or an elite enemy, it looks like. You were ambushed while crossing some rough terrain. Okay. So this is cool. Um, you know, in a way, there are plot events, right, that are going to be turned into card events, and we play through them like we play through the game. I like when, um, you know, CCGs or deck building games include things like this, translating a kind of random event into the game's terms. Okay. You sacrificed me while I was sleeping. It was the right play. I get it. Maybe. You'll help me? Play along for now. Oh, man. You may now see my moves ahead of time. Okay. Great. Now a lot more strategy comes into it. So, um, let me look at the game board. I'm going to push W... And I'm going to push W again. He's going to put a wolf cub right here on his turn. That's going to come down here um, and attack. But I have a boulder here. So the boulder should actually block it if I'm interpreting the game correctly. And all we need to do to tip the scales and win the event is just put something over here. Right? Um, so... The stoat, need I remind you, your items may help. No, I don't need those right now, but I appreciate it. The stoat, um, oh, 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 no, no, I can't play, I can play the squirrel, yeah. Play the squirrel, okay, go back, play the cat here. And then the cat comes into play, and we'll put it, um, here for now, this is fine. And then, I can play the stoat here, okay. Oh, but I put it in the wrong place because the cat is going to sit there. I didn't... I forgot that... I knew it persisted, but I just didn't, for some reason, put it together. So I'm going to have to chew through this stump. Here we go. Um, that's an interesting downside of the cat, is that it's permanently going to just take a place. Unless it gets hit by an enemy, I guess. Now, I could red snapper and put it out. It's, it's ostensibly better than what we have. Um, so I'm going to play this and these two. <laughs> Aw, the, st the stoat is not happy about it. And we'll put it right here, okay? You cannot draw on your first turn. Okay, um, I'm going to end the turn. Oh, I can, like, look at my bare hand. That's cool. Do it. Ding. Okay, so we hit Mind the Ambushous Wolf Cub. It ages swiftly. Oh, is it going to grow up? Let me look at that. Let me look at the game board. Oh, I need to draw. Um, I, I'm going to draw a regular card, and I got a wolf. Okay. Let me look at this thing. Fledgling. A card bearing this sigil will grow into a more powerful form after one turn on the board. Okay, so we do have to watch the ambitious wolf cub. Okay. So it has put a bat into play over here. It's flying, which, what's that do? A card bearing this sigil will strike an opponent directly, even if there's a creature opposing it. Okay, so it's going to hit me no matter what, and my cat can't hurt it. So that's kind of a problem. So what we're going to have to do is um, use this bottle to play a squirrel like right there. And then I'm going to play the wolf. I'm going to sacrifice the cat and the squirrel and put the wolf over here. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, end the turn. And the airborne bat flies over and hits us. My bat flew right over your cat. It did. Okay. And... Um, I definitely want just a random card, and I got another wolf. Great. Okay, so at this point... Can I sacrifice the River Snapper as two? No, it still only counts as one, even though it has two drops. That's a shame. Can I sacrifice the boulder? 
You cannot draw blood from a boulder. Yeah, I guess you're right about that. Uh, I'm going to just do it this way and play the wolf, even though it has less health, because it does more damage. And I don't really need a tank in my back line right now. I got to tell you what, though. I really like this game because immediately um, it's intuitive to me being somebody who's played, you know, many card games, Magic, Sway to Spire, Monster Train, like, it, it, but it's a new mechanic. Like, the, the way that the rules work is different enough that I don't feel like I quite grasp the best methods to do the strategy, which is fun. All right, I'm going to uh, end the turn. Okay, so now he's got somebody through on my side. The bat is hurting me badly. And all I can take are squirrels. So I'm going to play a squirrel just to block the wolf. and But we're going to be getting six damage through. So I'm going to play a squirrel right there. Um, and it'll block the wolf. The bat will get through. Not much I can do about that. But, um, you know, I will take two. But I will be doing six. So it'll go in our favor. Or we just win before he even gets to hurt. You prevailed and trekked onward past the now bloodied terrain. Okay. Another card choice. Alright, so we can get a wolf cub. It grows after a single turn and only requires one sacrifice. So that's kind of nice. Or the sparrow. An inexpensive, if feeble, flying creature. Okay. So this creature has two toughness for some reason and one damage. So I like... Um, you know, the damage that uh, is difficult to deal with. So, flying seems fun. Alright, we've got something going on here. I don't know what this is. You've stumbled into some strange stones in the mist. You were compelled to choose a worthy sacrifice, one that will be lost forever. Uh-oh. So I have to sacrifice something? Um... Of these two, which ones do I want to sacrifice? Wow. I'm going to sacrifice my cat. I'm not happy about this, but at the same time, uh, the way that it works, and the, the fact that I only get, like, a few slots... I do have two rows, I suppose. Um, yeah, maybe it was just because there was those other things in the way that it was disturbing me. I'm going to keep going with my cat. I like the fact that it helps me ramp faster, so I'm going to put that there. Now, I don't know what this means. You looked upon your menace... Your, oh, your menagerie. Sorry, I read that too quickly and selected a healthy host. So, what does this mean? We're going to level up a card? What does this do? Um, can I see what the effect will be? Let's see what happens. I like my cat, but if I can make it better, um, I'll do it. And let's see. It's now a... Oh! A ghastly spectacle, but the soul of the sparrow now lives on in the cat. So what it got was its property, and it flies, which is completely useless. So that was a terrible play. Um, I thought maybe it would just, like... You know, in some, some of these kind of card games, you can upgrade your card, and it does its own thing, but more effectively or more efficiently... In this case, that was just wrong, but I'm learning that that was bad. Whoa! Behold my totem. It inscribes my canine cards with the airborne sigil. Now, hopefully my cat can block a flyer, though. I don't know if that's how it works. All right, uh, what does this mean? A card bearing this sigil will strike an opponent directly, even if there's a creature opposing it. So I was wondering, like, a flyer can block a flyer, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Anyway, we're going to play the cat. Oh, um, play this. And good, go back, and then play the cat, like this. And, no, I do only have four rows. These are their rows. This is just what's coming around the bend. Um, so I'm going to put then... I'm going to put my cat actually off to the side so that it can live to uh, support me. This might be egregious, but I'm going to use the squirrel and put it down, and then... Um, 
Let's see, this does two damage. Wolf, how many hip health do you have? You only have two. Oh, the bat won't be blocked anyway. So I'm in actually bad shape. So what I'm going to do is uh, summon a wolf like that right here. And then this way, I won't block the bat, but I'll kill it next turn to avoid taking all that damage. And we'll end the turn. Oh, no, no, no. I misunderstood. So if they're back there on the about-to-happen row, they don't actually act or block this turn. They're just there to indicate intention. So I did three direct damage, which is actually pretty nice. Okay. My totem has granted my coyote the power of flight, indeed. So we've got two unblockable creatures, which is a little bit scary. Now, if I want to play like the Red Snapper, I'm going to need a squirrel to guarantee it. But the Red Snapper so far isn't the most useful card. But even if I draw... Um, is there a button? I wonder if I can push a button to see what's remaining in my deck. Um, you know, I have another wolf I know about. So, in that case... And I have my stoat. The stoat would be okay, but the, if I drew a wolf, I couldn't play it unless I had a squirrel anyway. But let's take a chance and... He's completely insane. You see that, right? No care for the rules. Pathetic, really. Enough! Uh-oh. Only keeps me around to watch me suffer. Oh, boy. This is... I love how I'm getting lore from the cards. Um, okay. So, but this does let me do this, which is to... Go ahead. I can kill this, then, with my stoat. Because it only has one toughness. So, we're going to play this guy. We're going to sack the cat and put him right here. Back on the board. That's right, buddy. And we're going to... Um, I could upgrade the stoat to the river snapper right now. Which is a hilarious play. Probably, it's always the right play. Um, and I feel bad for the stoat. Because he's talking to me. He's giving me secrets. The snapper doesn't talk. Um, but in, in terms of the game, it's a better play to just do this. just for value purposes, and then end the turn. Got it. Killed all his stuff. Alright, his wolf cub's coming to ruin my cat. And we got another wolf. I'm actually going to play the wolf instead of the snapper to do more damage. Uh, end this fight quickly. His totem is gone. Impressive. You may yet survive this ordeal. Knock on wood. Well, I'm going to need to. Oh, we got choices to make. All right. We're getting a card. Now we're choosing between three. All right. What do we get? Um, wolf. Cat. The watchful bullfrog. It leaps in the way of attacking flyers. So he can actually block flyers. Uh, and he's a one, two. Double Cat is interesting. Um, I don't know what these little mushrooms are or whatever down here. The thing that's interesting about Double Cat is that if you take it, it'll put you in a spot where every turn, once you get both of them in play, you can play all of your two-cost cards and never draw a squirrel, so it like accelerates you and thins your deck, but then it also is going to take up two spots on your back row. I'm going to try this Bullfrog and see if it's actually worthwhile. All right, now I have a choice. I can sacrifice a card to upgrade, or I can go to the campfire. I don't really know what the campfire does. Let's see what this is. Is this going to heal me or something? You came across a small group of survivors. Faces shrunken from starvation, they huddled around a campfire. They looked upon your group of creatures and beckoned. Come, warm one of your creatures by the fire, one said. Uh-oh. Warm it by the fire. That will enhance its power, said another. Okay, so this is how you level up a card. You noticed one of the survivors wiping drool from their mouth. Yeah, enhance its power by what they're going to eat it. Maybe this isn't what I'm thinking it is. Is this just so you can get rid of a card forever? Um, let's see if you can make my... <laughs> I like how the this, this stoat's like, hmm, I don't know about this. Let's see if you can make my snapper better. It did. The fire warmed the poor river snapper, enhancing its power. 
One of the survivors reached toward it. Another gnashed their teeth. Without a word, you pulled the river snapper away from the fire and left. Wow, that was a scary exchange. I'm sorry, everybody. All right, we've got another little encounter. I'm going to push W just to see what's going on. There's a grand fir tree. These block fires. Okay, and what is on their side? They have grizzly bear. Oh, boy. That's a big dude right there. Luckily, my turtle can handle that for a couple of turns, and they have a sparrow. Okay, so um, we're going to play. I didn't draw my cat, unfortunately. I'm going to put my squirrel here. And then I can play my bullfrog over... Uh, kill this and put it over here, at least. Just get that in play. And finish the turn. Alright. Another grizzly. Jeez. That four damage from the grizzly is... Terrifying. Um... I kind of have to draw a squirrel right here. But I don't like my position. Um, I'm going to do it. I need to get a squirrel and put it right here. Yikes. No, I didn't do this right. I might lose here. Um, I'm going to need to use my pliers. What do these things do again? Let me see. Not now. Draw a card first. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Well. Chat. Okay. Oh, I have to sacrifice even to play the cat. Oh, I hate where I'm at. No, I don't know if it if it was winnable or not, but I just did not play this correctly. Um, well, now, what is this going to do? I put my tooth over there. A well-earned point of damage. I didn't think you would really do it. Okay, I didn't think that's what that was going to do. Um, that is not helpful enough. I'm going to lose. Uh, okay, well, I have to lose. Um, I tried. You've lost. Using this as a learning opportunity may be the only way to mitigate my disappointment. Get up. Get up from the table. Okay. Fetch me the candlestick from atop the barrel beside the door. All right. Uh, okay. Um, oh, I can, like, move around. Okay. Uh, move over here. And move up. There's a safe with combination. All right. Interesting. Um, there's the survivors. Uh... I don't know what the combination would be at the moment. Uh, there's an outdoors. The candlestick from atop the barrel. Okay. Let's go over here and... I got it. Bring it here. Okay. And is here right here? Or... Uh... I'm trying to bring it here. Put it down, I guess. Now sit back down. Okay. Alright, I'm sitting back down. Let me explain something to you. Uh-oh, it burned out. That was one of the two mistakes you can make here. <laughs> if you make another, I must sacrifice you. Now, where were we? Well, I survived, I guess. Um... Uh, I don't know what the backpack is. Let's go ahead and upgrade another card. Snapper, Raven, and Elk. 
it moves after attacking. Huh. At the end of the owner's turn, a card bearing this signal, signal will move in the direction inscribed. So it's going to go to the right. So it's hard to defend with, or it can attack and then move out of the way, or... Um, interesting. All right. Uh, what do I want? The raven seems okay. Try it out. I don't want an up unupgraded turtle. Okay, let's go here. They're dying around the campfire. There's room for a creature. The warmth will enhance its power. Alright. Alright, so we're going to click here. Um... What would this do for the cat? Just give it extra health or something like that? I don't know um, how exciting that really is. Let's see what happens with a bigger wolf. Alright, gets more attack. That's cool. And now we have to fight a boss. And now somebody tells me we're going to clearly lose this fight. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. This is getting really scary. The trees seem to close in around you as a chill mist descended. In the distance you could hear the clicking of metal on stone. A horrible figure stood in your path. Oh. Hee-haw! Twas the prospector. It is a prospector. Hi, buddy. You looking for gold? Alright, there's a boulder. What's over there on their side? A coyote and a pack mule. So, it's going to move and block, I guess? Okay. So, let me... Let me play a squirrel here. And then let me play my cat here. And now if it's going to move over, I don't know if that m pushes the coyote or how that works exactly. Um, I'm going to move it, my cat over here. And then I can't play anything else at the moment. I'm just going to end the turn. Wait, what's underneath the pack mule? Is it like, is there a card that I get if it, if it dies or something? Okay, now I gotta tell you what. Um, I bet if I played my consumables right and I didn't waste those squirrels in a bottle and stuff, I could have maybe done this perfectly, but I don't know. What's underneath it? Why is there like a present under it? Okay, um, I've got my upgraded wolf out. But the problem is... Um, no, I can kill their coyote. Okay, let's do that. Let me get a squirrel. I think if I put it here, I will kill their coyote before the pack mule moves and get a shot on the pack mule next turn. I think... Okay. Is this my upgraded snapper? It is. Alright, I'm gonna definitely take a squirrel then, and just ramp with my cat, and use this. Ding, ding, ding. And then, um, we're gonna end the turn. Okay. So we're gonna kill the mule, and let's just draw a regular card, see what we get. We got a wolf, which we're not gonna play at the moment. Um, I'm just going to end the turn. And what is this? Oh, it filled up my hand. Tag nab it, my mule. Thank you. Uh-oh. He killed my wolf. That's rude. But we can do this. All right, let me see. In my hand, I've got a cat... A wolf, a bullfrog. Okay, so let's play a cat. Oh, I need to draw a card first. I was getting ahead of myself. Um, just give me a regular card. Okay, and then we're going to play our squirrel over here. And then we're going to go ahead and play a wolf. Ding, ding, like that. And we'll play a cat. 
No, no, I can't play a cat. Never mind. If I play a cat, my, my board is full. Um, I gotta wait. I can play a uh, bullfrog, though. So let's put a bullfrog here. Good. And then now I can play a wolf. Bing, bing. Here. Go. Alright, we took him down. I hope you didn't think it would be that easy. It was kind of easy. I was hoping it would be. There's gold in them cards. Is there? Oh, he just chopped up all my cards. But I've struck gold, he did. Um, how do I get rid of this gold? I have to wait for him to dismantle it? Uh, interesting. I can't really play anything. Uh, okay. The Bloodhound. Get him. Uh, what's the Bloodhound do? I need a squirrel. When an opposing creature is placed opposite to an empty space, a card bearing this sigil will move to the empty space. Oh, he defends empty rows. Okay. Interesting. I don't have any space. How much damage does this guy do? He does two. My bullfrog has how much health? Two. I could put my bullfrog here to just block and die, and that's probably the best I'm going to get. I need some more space to play my cards. I don't think I can... Um, Yeah, I can't do anything with these gold nuggets. They're just blocking me up. I could put my cat down, but then I can't play anything. So we'll do this and just slowly chip away, I guess, at the Bloodhound by doing one damage. It's not great, but it's all I've got. Okay. Um... This is probably this is a dumb play. I don't know if you can run out of squirrels or not. Is the only thing I was trying to consider here. All right. Yeah, this is this was just a terrifyingly bad choice of play on my part. Raven should kill the Bloodhound at the very least. No, it doesn't. That's right. It flies over it. Oof. I forgot about how that worked. Oh, man. I'm in such bad shape. It's like, it's cool that you fly, but the fact that you don't actually hit the card... Oof. Well, there really wasn't much I could do. The, the Gold Nugget defense was really really formidable for me. Um, what is my health at? I'm not dead yet, but it's very nearly the case. That keeps it, like, somewhat even. But... He's doing the prospector again. Easy boss. The mule's key. Yeah, I killed it, but uh, it's not going to be easy for me, unfortunately. Um, Alright, what do you do? You have... Um, I know, I just want to see what you have. You have one health. Okay, I can play it here. It's the best we've got, dude. You don't want to die to the adder. 
the wolf will also kill you. This will allow you to kill the bloodhound eventually. But we probably won't live to see the end of that. No, we won't. All right. Well, I didn't do very well. No gold for me. Or more gold. Yeah, you get me. That didn't go very well. You aren't dead yet. This isn't purgatory. Though you may think of it that way. Before you expire, I must ask you a favor. I would like a memento. Oh, God. Your very own death card. It's quite plain at the moment, isn't it? We'll work together to amend that. I want this to be the perfect memento of you. Um, here are some cards from your mediocre deck. We can put them to good use. Please choose a card to draw the cost from. Okay, this one, I guess. A cost of two blood from the wolf. An and another. This time I'll use its power and health. Okay, this one. And now choose a card which to extract from the sigils. Uh... Cat seems good. So I can build... A reoccurring turtle? This would let it block flyers. So it would be like a huge tank that can block flyers. Let's do that. A sigil of mighty leap from the bullfrog. Okay. I never did ask your name here. Doctor Incompetent. That's right. This is but... There's but one final matter. The portrait. Are you ready? I suppose I am. You do not need to smile. God. Brutal. What a game. Alright, so now this card goes into my deck. On future attempts, hopefully. Here we go again. Another challenger. Perhaps it is time. Perhaps you can understand bones. A resourceful possum costs two bones. You grab, you gain a bone, one of your creatures perishes for any reason. Oh, okay. So, you just get this resource when things die. That's cool. Well, I think that's a good place to end this first episode of Inscription. And I have to say, I can totally see why this game is so well-liked, why people have been recommending it. It is just such an interesting amalgamation of card game um, and just kind of like supernatural horror mystery nightmare that it is completely intriguing me. The options are tight and compact, and yet um, the choices feel really rich and complex. So I think this is just a very well-balanced, well-designed game from what I can see, but I need to play more, obviously, and learn more mechanics. And we'll get into that next time. Everyone, I'd love to know what you all think about the game so far. Like, what are your takeaways? Do you play this game? Do you recommend it? Um, anything at all you want to talk about, but try to keep spoilers out of it because this is my first time and I'm just kind of getting exposed to it um, naturally here. And having a blast with it. So, again, um, Daniel, thank you for the game. And thank you uh, for recommending the game. Uh, people in the comments, I really appreciate it. Uh, Sir Weebs, thank you for recommending this game. I hope you all have an excellent evening or day. And I'll check you guys next time. Take care. <laughs>